O'Connell is an internationally recognized health and medical writer, consultant, and lecturer on addiction. He has created courses on addiction at Cape Cod Community College and writes the popular Cape Cod Times advice column on addiction. He is also the author of the booklet, Up in Smoke, and the book, Addicted, a guide to understanding addiction. Now, Tom O'Connell. Hi, welcome to Understanding Addiction. I'm gonna talk a little bit today about Scrooge, Ebenezer Scrooge, from A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I was driving home from Connecticut one time at, and after the, at the end of the Christmas season, and I turned on public radio on, in my car, and I heard the original version of A Christmas Carol, and I was amazed at what I heard. I didn't realize that it was a recovery from addiction story, and what I'm going to point out today by using quotations from Charles Dickens is why I believe that's the case. I believe that Scrooge had many addictions, and not just one, and he might have been addicted to money and work. Uh, he was addicted to self-centeredness, I believe. I believe he was addicted to anger and negativity, and he possibly was addicted to alcohol. Addiction, it's a very complicated subject. When we talk about addiction, we're talking about all kinds of addiction, whether this applies to Scrooge or somebody else or ourselves. When I think about addiction, I also think about definitions of addiction, especially Dr. Gitlow's definition. It's my favorite definition of addiction. And when Dr. Gitlow describes addiction, he talks about any attempt to cope with the problems of life other than interpersonal relating. In other words, addiction is a relationship in itself, and it causes relationship problems. As A Christmas Carol opens, Dickens says Marley was dead to begin with. There is no doubt whatever about that. And he points out that the, the firm that both of both Scrooge and Marley operated was listed as a two-person organization. And interestingly enough, even though Marley was dead, Scrooge still answered to both names. It says he, it was all the same to him. So did he have an identity problem or possibly an honesty problem? He was running what they called the counting house. And years before when Marley died, he stayed open for business. Obviously, I think he had been suffering from what I call the OC of addiction. He was suffering from obsession, and he was suffering from compulsion. He was haunted by his obsessions, and he was driven by his compulsions. And as the story unfolds, we see how true this was. Scrooge was described as Marley's sole executor, his sole friend, only friend, and sole mourner. Describing Scrooge, Dickens says he was secret and self-contained and solitary as an oyster. And this applies to addicts, solitary, isolated addicts. Also, Dickens mentions the moods that Scrooge had. And listen to this quotation, blind men's dogs, when they saw him coming, would tug their owners into doorways in order to avoid Scrooge because of those awful moods. So I think that Scrooge was afflicted by what I call the five C's of addiction. In his moods and in his appetites, he had this craving and this compulsion that, that got out of control, and he would continue these behaviors like running that counting house day and night, seven days a week, in spite of life-damaging consequences. And the way Dickens describes this life, this addicted life that Scrooge was was leading, he edged his way along the crowded paths of life, warning all human sympathy to keep its distance. He wanted distance from everything except his addictive behaviors. And we see the nephew saying, Merry Christmas, Uncle, and the famous words in response, Bah humbug. And then when someone from collecting for the poor says to him, What shall I put you down for? He just growls, Nothing. And then the person says, you want to be anonymous? And he says, I wish to be left alone. So I think he was suffering from what we call the ISM of addiction. The ISM is insecurity, 
super sensitivity and moodiness. And I believe that Scrooge manifested all these qualities. In, other, in another scene, there's a Christmas caroler. And Scrooge has a ruler in his hand, and he's chasing this person singing Christmas carols. He hates this whole concept of Christmas. So the, ca the singer flees in terror. And then he becomes furious about paying his clerk's holiday pay for December 25th. And then you see Scrooge alone. Scrooge took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern. And then describing where he lived, his home, a gloomy suite of rooms. And where was it located? Above a wine merchant's cellars. So I see Scrooge as burdened by what I call the dependence with a capital D. And in that state, he was in suspense, and he was suffering a lot. He was in tension. He was in emotional pain. He was dependent in an unhealthy way on his behaviors. They were controlling him. The end result of this, he became paranoid. When he came home, he looked under the table. Nobody under the table. Nobody in the, under the sofa or the bed or the closet. And then he sat down near this fireplace that was built by a Dutch merchant, and he was in front of a low fire all by himself, sitting close to the fireplace, on which there were Dutch tiles designed to illustrate scriptures. Sort of interesting. There were angelic messengers, there were Cain and Abel, and all these figures, hundreds of figures, to attract his attention. And out of this configuration came the face of Marley, seven years dead. So he was experiencing something like a hallucination. And in those years of addiction, I believe he had been suffering from the CPF of addiction. The CPF is cro the chronic nature of addiction, how it gets progressively worse and potentially fatal. So as we look at Scrooge, I think we see a person with psychological problems. He had even seen Marley's face in the door knocker. And then he began to hear a bell swinging all by itself, making loud noises. Then he saw Marley's ghost, and he didn't believe his eyes. He thought he had, quote, a slight disorder of the stomach. Then he fell on his knees and, asked, and yelled, mercy. And the air was filled with phantoms. None of these phantoms were free. And Scrooge was not free either. He was in bondage to his addictions. And he went to bed, as many addicts have done and still do, without undressing and fell asleep on the instant. Scrooge, I believe, was caught in the addiction triangle. He was trying to fill his emptiness with his addictions, and he was not successful not successful. No addict is successful in filling that emptiness with addictions. He wakes up in the dark. The more he thought, the more perplexed he was, and the more he endeavored not to think, the more he thought. In other words, his mind was reeling. He was obsessed in his head. And then a ghost arrives and says, you will be haunted by three spirits. I am the ghost of Christmas past. And this ghost had the bright light shining up from its head, up toward the sky. And then Scrooge asks the ghost, the long ago past? And the ghost replies, no, your past. And then the question is, what's this all about? And the ghost replies, your welfare. So I think what we're dealing with here is the welfare that the ghost is talking about is what I describe as the PMESS of addiction. Scrooge at this point is obviously a person who's holistically affected by addiction. It's bothering him physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, and spiritually. There's almost none of the original person left. He's simply immersed in addiction. And Scrooge still, he's defensive, and so he says he'd rather have an uninterrupted night's sleep than have the ghost there reminding him about the past. He's thinking this, and the ghost reads his mind and says, all right, then, it'll be your reclamation. The ghost changes the word to satisfy Scrooge's uh, re response. And he sa the ghost says, take heed, rise, and walk with me. And so they go through a country road, and they go through fields, and they go through villages, and eventually they arrive at a place where Scrooge is looking at himself as a child in school. The quotation, a solitary child, neglected by his friends, is left there still. And Scrooge sobs now as he looks at his past, his lonely past. And I think he might have been, <coughs> excuse me, 
an adult children of an adult child of an alcoholic, an ACOA, and I think he might have been sent away to school from his family, from that situation of chaos. And then we, he, it's described a large house but one of broken fortunes. So whether that's Scrooge's home or the school that he's in, there's something negative and deteriorating about that situation. And then as, as I believe it's describing the school, it says a long, bare, melancholy room, a lonely boy reading near a feeble fire. A very negative kind of sound here, very isolated, very lonely. As Scrooge watched himself as a child, he <coughs> took pity for his former self and he said, poor boy, and then he began to cry. I think what we see here is an example of what I describe as the SAAH of addiction. Now in the SAAH, we're talking about the human condition. And Scrooge is suffering from the basics in the human condition. He's separated from those he loves, he's anxious about this, and he desires to be attached. And all he's attached to as a lonely boy is the books in the school where he is there alone. And here in another scene, we see Scrooge at another Christmas time, and Dickens writes, there he was alone again. And the, ho the, home, the house or school around him was deteriorating and all the other boys had gone home for the holidays. So you see a very lonely Scrooge in his childhood. And then another scene that becomes more hopeful, a younger girl shows up and she says, I have come to take you home, dear brother, home for good. Father is so much kinder than he used to be. So this gives us the clue that father had been very cruel and father had probably been impaired by alcoholism. And so now let's look at a definition of addiction to help explain that. And what we're talking about is unhealthy dependence. And it's unhealthy dependence that in, impairs our ability, or Scrooge's father's ability, to perform to full potential. So I believe that Scrooge's father was suffering from addiction, and particularly alcohol addiction. Now in another scene, we see an office party. Scrooge is taken back into his past, and he's at an office party in a warehouse, and Fezziwig says, no more work tonight. It's a very happy atmosphere. Christmas Eve, Dick, Christmas, Ebenezer. Obviously, Scrooge had forgotten these lessons that Christmas and other times of year were supposed to be happy times. At the party, quotation from Dickens, plenty of beer. Also, cheerful voices. It's not describing addiction, it's just describing the happy scene. Now, like a recovering alcoholic who's looking back at his past, Scrooge is described this way. His heart and soul were in the scene. He remembered everything, enjoyed everything, and underwent the strangest agitation. Agitation is one of the things that addiction brings us, and also memories of how we have been addicted. And Scrooge was caught up in these memories as he looked into the past. And then in another scene, there's a fair young girl. This turns out to be the girl that Scrooge had planned to marry, and it shows her in mourning. And she says to Scrooge, you feared the world too much. I have seen your nobler aspirations fall off one by one until the master passion gain engrosses you. So she was describing his major addiction as greed and gain and that was taking over his life, and that ruined his relationship. And Scrooge tries to talk her out of this and says, I have grown so much wiser. I am not changed towards you, but she knows that he's addicted. And he was caught, I believe, in what I describe as the addiction process. He had experimented, and it had made him feel good to get caught up in making money and more money and more money. It changed his feelings. He developed habits around this, eventually became dependent on this behavior and eventually addicted. At the same time, he may well have been addicted to other things like alcohol. So what we're talking about here is a lost love. His addictive behavior put him in that condition. She recalls, as the, the lost love recalls, that at one point they had been poor and content to be so, and she sees the change in him now. She says that he has what she describes as an altered spirit, and then she says, I release you. May you be happy in the life you have chosen. In other words, she's detaching from his addiction and saying, if you want to have your addiction, I'm not going to be along with you. Scrooge gets upset 
says to the spirit, show me no more. Then, though, the, the, the spirit takes him to a scene of his lost love, now living in a happy family situation. And that's very interesting. Her husband, in this situation, talks about seeing Scrooge. And Scrooge hears this as he goes back into the, the situation. And the husband says, there he sat alone, quite alone in the world, I do believe. And then again, Scrooge wants to escape from these memories, and he says to the spirit, remove me from this place. He was conscious of being exhausted at this point. Exhaustion. Every addict knows that exhaustion. And he was, quote, overcome by irresistible drowsiness. I believe he was suffering at that point from what I call the D, D, T, and W of addiction, especially the withdrawal part of the D, D, T, and W. He was defending his old behavior, he was even denying his old behavior, and he had the certain tolerance that he had built up for this behavior, but now he was in withdrawal, and he was feeling that discomfort. Scrooge is a wonderful example of a person caught up in addiction. At one point it describes a violent fit of trembling that he has during this process of awareness that's coming to him. And I believe it was the DTs, delirium tremens. He was shaking as he withdrew from his alcohol consumption. And then the ghost of pr Christmas present shows up. And this time we see Scrooge getting humble. And he says, Spirit, conduct me where you will. He's starting to accept this, this process that he finds himself in. And he starts to see scenes of Tiny Tim being doomed and he feels grief over this. And he hears his nephew's Christmas wishes. But think of the gloom of it all. Dickens says, through the lonely darkness over an unknown abyss whose depths were secrets as profound as death. This is the trip that he's taking into his past and now into the present. He goes to sick beds, he goes to poor houses and hospitals and jails and he sees all kinds of misery. And then the, Chris the ghost of Christmas yet to come shows up and says, and, and Scrooge's response is, I fear you, but I hope to live to be another man from what I was. Scrooge is now in a, in a major conversion process and he now has hope that he can change. And then he goes to a scene where people are joking about his death in the future. But, quote, he resolved to treasure every word he heard and everything he saw. He was now in touch. He was now in touch with the need to change his, his addictive behavior. He was seeing the past clearly, the present and the future. And then we have a scene in a very obscure part of town with all kinds of people described as wretched and drunken and ugly. And he goes to a shop where, at this point, he, in the future, he, Scrooge, is dead. And what they're doing is they're taking his belongings and splitting them up among themselves. And one of them says, I hope he didn't die of anything that's catching. So it's a very, it's a very depressing kind of scene. The, the home that he would die in if he stuck with his addiction is described as a dark, empty house. And then he ends up seeing his own body lying on the bed, dead. I, I think this, this illustrates how he had come through a kind of addictive slavery, an addictive bondage. And when, I, when we describe this, it, it reminds me of one of the original definitions of addiction. He, Scrooge was devoted to his addiction, and it led him into a kind of prison, and that's what happens in addiction. Eventually, he ends up seeing Bob Cratchit's house, and they're talking about Tiny Tim being dead, and that makes him feel sad. And Scrooge now has deep remorse, and he wants to change, and he says to the spirit, hear me, I am not the man I was. Assure me that I may yet change these shadows you have shown me by an altered life. He's coming into recovery. He's on what we call the road to recovery. What he's doing now is admitting his problem. <clears throat> he's surrendering to it, the reality of it. He's getting help, he's getting humble, and he's willing to change his behavior. Then he moves into the point where he says he's going to honor Christmas in his heart and try to keep it all the year. He starts into this happiness phase. I'll live in the past, the present, and the future. The spirits of all three shall strive within me. I will not shut out the lessons that they teach. He's, this is amazing. He's really now talking about what I call the key to recovery. And the key to recovery is the healing of the human spirit, and Scrooge is experiencing this. He's getting in touch with love and truth. It's a conversion experience. He ends up praying to have his fate changed. 
and he sees at this point now the 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 whole process starts to to fade and the phantom begins to fade and it says it shrunk it collapsed and it dwindled down into a bedpost so there he is now back again alive in his own bed and I think what he's experienced in his life is he's been caught up in three triangles and these three triangles are what we call the addiction triangles and and the Addiction has separated him from himself, and it separated him from others, and it separated him from God, and now he's returning to a new way of life. So he goes on his knees and he says, I'm as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. I am as giddy as a drunken man. A Merry Christmas to everybody. He has the shakes, though. He's still in, in withdrawal. In fact, it says in the quotation, shaving was not an easy task, for his hand continued to shake very much. So now we're, we're ending up in, a, in what we call a, a, another triangle that recovery is dissolving. And we're seeing that by getting into recovery, we're, we're finding a Scrooge who's coming out of his addiction and getting a straight relationship with himself and a nice straight on relationship with other people and a straight relation, a real direct relationship with God or his higher power. What happens to him? He changes. He goes to church. He walks the streets. He pats children on the head. This is a new Scrooge. He asks beggars questions and he finds, quote, happiness. It's a whole new thing for him, happiness. So he gives Cratchit a raise. He becomes a second father to Tiny Tim. He sees life differently now. He's less isolated. He's less self-centered. He's less fearful and he's less greedy. And he's willing to make, be open and honest and to love others and to be loved. It's amazing. He's on what we call a recovery journey. He's in a process. And it is a process. It's not an event. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a journey. And so it, I wish you will enjoy your journey too, as Scrooge enjoyed his. As Dickens writes, quote, he became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the old city knew. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh and little heeded them, for he was wise enough to know that nothing ever happened on this globe for good at which some people did not have their own fill of laughter. His own heart laughed, and that was quite enough for him. I think Scrooge had found what I call the spiritual solution. And in that spiritual solution, he had allowed these new awarenesses to come in in the form of ghosts of past, present, and future, and he had allowed himself to change, and he had turned to unselfishness as a method to fill that empty spot inside himself. And so we see a new Scrooge. We see a new Scrooge, and we look back, and I look back, and I see Charles Dickens about 150 years ago writing what I consider one of the most outstanding addiction recovery stories that's ever been done. And it talks about addiction, it talks about selfishness and greed and intensity and obsession and compulsion, and then it shows a spiritual conversion and how difficult it is to go through it, to get in touch with the past, the present, and the possible future if you don't change your behavior. And then it describes a man's renewal, a real renewal. And the story concludes, <clears throat> and this is why I sincerely believe that, that Dickens in his heart was talking about alcoholism when he wrote the story, because at the very end of the story, here's how he, he finishes it. Quote, he, he's talking about Scrooge, had no further intercourse with spirits, but lived upon the total abstinence principle ever afterwards. And it was always said of him, that he knew how to keep Christmas well. The total abstinence principle, it can only mean one thing, a pledge not to drink alcohol. And this was used in those days as it is used today by people who want to change their behavior. So I think this story is a recovery story, specifically a recovery story about alcoholism and the hope there is for recovery. And it's a recovery story not just for Christmas time, but for every day of the year. So I suggest to you that if you want to really have some enjoyment, read the original version of The Christmas Carol, and I think you're going to be amazed at what you see there. Thank you for being with us on Understanding Addiction.
Enjoy the holidays.